Praise the Lord. This is Sister Marilyn Belcher, and I'm the pastor of the First United Pentecostal Church here in Centerville, Alabama. And I'm thankful that you are with us today. And I am just so excited about uh, what God is doing. You know, I, I, I strive to find positive out of the negative. And I know that we're, according to the world standard, we're, we're living in a turbulent times. We're living in dismal times. And, and I'm asked, well, how can you be so positive? And how can you be so excited? It's because I read the book and I know the end of the book and I know that Jesus Christ is going to be victorious. He is victorious. The church is going to be victorious because at the sounding of that trumpet, we're going to rise and the church is going to go home to be with the Lord. And so until then, I just keep plugging away. I just keep working. I keep doing whatever I have to do, but I seek for the positive among the negative. And when you're serving a positive God, you're preaching a positive message, why wouldn't you be positive? So today I want you to be encouraged in the Lord. I'm going to uh, take my text today from Isaiah, the ninth chapter and verse 6, and I'm going to be preaching on Jesus is the reason. Now the shirt that I've got on is many years old, but it says Jesus is the reason for the season. And I've worn this for years upon years. Jesus is the reason for the season. And so, but when you're serving God, it's not just seasonal. He's at all times. But we are at the coming into the what some would call the Christmas season. There's some people for whatever reason they don't observe Christmas. They don't celebrate the birth of Christ. Uh, but I do. I celebrate the birth of Christ and so it's not about uh, the reindeers Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. It's not about old fat, jolly Santa Claus, some made-up concoction. It's not about elf on the shelf. It's not about about any of that. It's about Jesus. And so I'm going to read Isaiah 9 and 6. And the scripture says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And looking at verse 7, of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon His kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You know, uh, here in our area, we have a station that starts playing Christmas music. Sometimes they start it way back at the end of October or the first of November. And, and so uh, it, it's kind of like a, 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 a standard thing you expect to turn to that particular radio station. And 24 7 is nothing but Christmas music. But after a while, after a short, short while, I get tired of hearing all about I'll be home for Christmas and and you hope it's, it snows for Christmas and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and, and Jingle Bell and Jingle Bell Rock. And, and, and I get tired of that. I want to hear something. I want to hear those old-time church songs about the birth of Jesus Christ. I want to hear about away in a manger. I, I, I want to hear. And, and so one thing I've noticed since we've come into the month of December, I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. But I've been doing a lot of shopping. And one thing, though, that I'm not seeing is hardly anything 
when you go out into the mall or you go out to the stores, I'm not seeing hardly anything about Jesus. We've got to be so careful that we don't take Jesus out of Christmas. The world's already done that. But don't let the church be guilty of that. Because He is the reason that we even celebrate Christmas. It's the birth of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 7 and 14, this is prophecy. And it, but we're going to see it fulfilled in the book of Matthew. It says, Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. But then we go over to the book of Matthew and we see that being fulfilled in Matthew the first chapter and verse 23. Gabriel was talking to, G uh, to Joseph and he told him that his name would be uh, called Jesus and then he brought up there uh, the prophecy concerning his birth and he quoted there Isaiah 7 and 14 but when he said Emmanuel he gave the interpretation and that is God with us and then I go over into the book of Luke in the first chapter and verse 31 and this is when that same angel Gabriel the messenger angel was speaking now to Mary to let her know that she's the virgin that's going to conceive and bear a son and so the scripture says and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Now we know the old scripture says Emmanuel. The new scripture says Jesus. But the interpretation of Emmanuel is God with us. And the angel told Mary his name. His name shall be called Jesus. And so when he was born, his name was called Jesus. The last scripture is 1 Timothy 3 and 16. You know there's so many different opinions about the Bible. Uh, and sometimes I wonder, you know, I know we got the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But you hear some people quoting it and it's like, what book did you get that from? What interpretation did you get that from? But yet the Bible says, and without controversy, that means no arguing. That means it's not up for debate. That means it, it, the word of God is forever settled in heaven. <laughs> and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh remember John 1 and 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God go down to verse 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us First Timothy said don't argue it don't argue it. It's already done. It's forever settled. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory speaking of the resurrection you know when my daughter was little and then I, my grandson came along when he was little at Christmas time I'd bake a cake it might just be a one layer 
But we would sing, Happy Birthday, Jesus. She got gifts just like anybody else. We went out and sung carols in the neighborhood. We did all the things that most kids would associate with Christmas. But I wanted them to know that's not about what we're really celebrating. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. So today, don't lose your focus. Don't get so caught up in the hype that it's all about gifts and it's all about the pressures that go along with this time of year. Keep your mind upon the birth of Jesus Christ. For if there had not been a birth, there would not have been Calvary. It's got to start somewhere. And it started with the birth of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for truth. And we know that truth is Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus, you know truth. If you know truth, you know Jesus. So today we celebrate not just this season, not just this one time a year, but we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. God with us. We ask you to keep us and watch over us. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.